All right, I, I suspect you're all very anxious to get away. Um, it's been a very, very successful weekend, I, th I think. Um, um, maybe, maybe I'm sort of, sort of a little bit biased on that, but I do think it has been very, very successful, and I'm very grateful to the uh, contribution everybody has made to it. Um, I think um, we saw at first hand and in some detail how difficult and complex and sensitive um, and indeed emotive the issues around the Eighth Amendment are. We saw it on the first uh, at our first weekend meeting, but uh, I think it was more obvious this weekend. Um, once again, this, the Assembly has benefited from some excellent speakers who have addressed many of the most pressing issues identified by the citizens during the brainstorming session the previous weekend. Um, um, I, I, I just refer to them briefly. Uh, Dr. Peter McParland provided us with a very comprehensive insight into the work of a fetal medicine expert. Um, we heard from him um, uh, about uh, definitional definitional issues, including information on the range of conditions, as well as statistical information on incidence and prevalence. That was very, very useful information. And again, I remind you, you have the papers and you have um, the, the slides he used, which are, are, are very, very useful. We also heard about how abnormalities are diagnosed and what screening is available. We also heard about what diagnosis means in terms of a woman's options at different sta stages of gestation. And he described the care paths open, um, the options which are available to women, including continuing pregnancy or termination. Um, to complement uh, uh, Dr. McParland's um, um, insights. We had insights from uh, Dr. Adrian Foran, and she gave us details of the care paths for women and their babies who receive a diagnosis of fatal fetal abnormality and decide to continue with their pregnancies. She also gave details about what is known in terms of prognosis from these conditions. Again, we have the paper, we have the, uh, the um, slides, and we have the very um, um, meaningful and interesting four cases she gave us. Um, moving on to the law, um, um, Eileen Barrington, senior counsel, gave us an overview of the law in this jurisdiction in relation to fatal fetal abnormalities. Again, very, very useful uh, paper um, and very useful slides. And we also heard from Dr. Noel Higgins um, on very complex matters, um, the connection between um, Irish law, international law, and European law. And I, 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 I hope you benefited from that, because it is complex, and I thought she presented it in a, in a way that um, if you work on it, you should get the message, if I may put it that way. Um, then yesterday afternoon, we had a very interesting session about ethical arguments. Um, first of all, uh, well, in fact, the ethical arguments we were able to address yesterday were um, the moral status of the unborn. And we had, as you remember, Dr. Helen Mott and Professor Bobby Farsides. And again, I want to remind you, uh, as I've done previously, um, uh, that... Um, the other side of the coin, if I may put it that way, um, reproductive autonomy will be addressed at our next meeting. It would have been addressed um, yesterday, but for a difficulty that was beyond our control. But you will be hearing about it on at the next um, weekend uh, meeting. Um, now, uh, I think it's important that I should express gratitude to all of the speakers. Um, and I'm particularly conscious of the fact that uh, our meeting came very, very, very soon after the Christmas break. And um, I, I, I'm quite sure, I, I know from the, the, the interaction I had with the Secretariat that um, the speakers did have to work um, um, over the ho holiday period uh, to produce uh, the papers for us. And uh, to, uh, I'm very grateful for that. Um, their commitment, professionalism, and courtesy is very much appreciated by myself and by the Secretariat. 
I would also like to thank um, the uh, members of the expert advisory group who have given so generously of their time and expertise in pre preparation for the weekend. Um, um, I, I, again, I know from my own experience that this involved emails flying backwards and forwards. I'd say maybe Christmas Day wasn't included, but every other day over the Christmas period, and also a meeting um, last Wednesday. Um, so, I mean, again, um, my very uh, special thanks to the members. Um, I want to also uh, say a special word of thanks to the facilitators and the note, papers, note takers sorry, for their work this weekend. Um, their role is an important one, um, and I know from the feedback received from the members to date that they have been doing an excellent job. Um, information on their role is on the website now, and anybody interested can find out more. And um, I just want to say that um, because of uh, sort of the change in the style of the um, expert, or sorry, of, 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 of the work process we had yesterday, or, or sorry, today, um, that they had, we had a, a fairly long meeting yesterday evening. So they've put in a, a lot more work than uh, probably the members see. They've put in a lot of work and I'm very grateful to them. And last but not least, I have to thank the Secretariat for the amazing work they have done. Um, it was very difficult to get, if I may put it this way, this particular show on the road because of the closeness to the Christmas holiday. And they have been working. I, I can say from, I know from the emails I got, I can say, honestly, they've been working day and night. And um, I, I'm really very, very grateful to them. And um, they've done colossal work. And I just want to add as well, I want to once again uh, thank the Secretary General of the Department of the Taoiseach uh, for the, the provision of resources to us. Um, we have been very well resourced. And in particular, in relation to the submissions, uh, which you will appreciate, are a huge job for us. Um, additional personnel have been made available uh, to, to help us deal with that. So I, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Now I'm going to uh, get down to talking about um, the work programme for the remaining weekends. Um, uh, at the last meeting, we asked the members to tell us what further issues they wish to hear about in relation to the Eighth Amendment. And um, this was to ensure that the members were equipped with sufficient knowledge and a range of, rele a range of relevant perspectives to confidently be able to make recommendations to the houses of the Oireachtas. And um, as I said at the close of the last meeting, the task ahead of us is a large one, which was exemplified by the long list of areas identified um, as requiring exploration. And um, just after the last meeting, the Secretariat prepared a report of the feedback from the brainstorming session, and I think I've already mentioned this, um, it provides a full list of the issues identified at each table together with a useful summary. Each member was provided with a copy of this report in advance of this weekend's meeting and it will also be available on the uh, Assembly's website later today. So the members of the public can see the views expressed by uh, the uh, members at the last meeting in the last brainstorming session and I'm, I'm hoping we will do the same in relation to what happened our, 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 our most recent brainstorming session which finished about a half an hour ago now using the report um, um, from that brainstorming session and with the assistance of the secretariat and the expert advisory group I prepared a draft work programme for the remaining weekends on, on the Eighth Amendment. Um, this was presented to the members in advance of today's meeting and it will also be available on the Assembly's website later today. Um, further to this um, and in considering the feedback from the members and the range of issues to be covered, and this is important, uh, I came to the conclusion that an additional weekend on the Eighth, Eighth Amendment was required in order to give full consideration to the issues to be identified, um, 
when, you, when we set it all out on paper and when you looked at it, it became absolutely obvious that we needed the additional weekend. And I can say that uh, the matter was put uh, to a vote of the members in the private session yesterday and they agreed with my recommendation. So there is going to be um, an, an additional weekend on the Eighth Amendment. So this will bring the total number of weekends set aside to considering the topic of the Eighth Amendment to five, five weekends in all. Um, now I want to make this very clear as well. Um, it is important to note that this does not affect my previous commitment to complete the work in respect of the Eighth Amendment within the first half of 2017. Um, I'm determined that we will deal swiftly and comprehensively with this matter and report and make recommendations to the government as soon as possible. Um, in the coming weekends, we will look at a wide range of issues, including the complex and difficult area of rape, both from a medical and legal perspective. We will also look at the availability of legal terminations in other jurisdictions and learn more about the UK regime. And of course, we will take on board what was said recently, just five or 10 minutes ago in relation to other jurisdictions. Um, we will also look at the regulation of the medical profession and issues arising, including conscientious objection. Um, and this is something, again, I want to emphasise. Uh, we will also hear the personal stories of women in crisis pregnancy. We will hear of their experiences to allow the members to hear firsthand about how the matters we are discussing at these weekends affect women and their families. Um, and we will also consider how cr crisis pregnancies affect vulnerable groups in Irish society. Now, just moving on, we will, uh, we will uh, invite a number of advocacy groups um, to present to this, uh, make presentations to the assembly. The selection of advocacy advocacy groups will be made with reference to the submissions this, the Assembly has received and um, also in accordance with the Assembly's rules and procedures of which you are all aware. And um, the selection will be approved by the steering group. Um, I will say more about that um, in a moment. Now on our final weekend, the additional weekend, which, is, which commences on the 22nd of April, um, we will focus on making recommendations to the Oireachtas. Um, I felt, and the members agreed, that ample time needs to be dedicated solely to this task. It would be inappropriate, after being provided with a wealth of information and material on the issue, uh, to shoehorn making re recommendations into a single morning or afternoon session. And of course, I just want to add, we heard some views today, but there, on the basis of our knowledge at this point in time, we're going to have an awful lot more information and knowledge by the time the 22nd of April comes. Um, I just want to add as well that the draft work programme is subject to further change and any amendments and additions will be made uh, by me in consultation with the members of the Assembly. Uh, the members will have a say in, in the work programme throughout. Um, I'm, as I stated earlier, just a short while ago, uh, the uh, revised work programme for the lifetime of the Assembly will be available on the uh, website uh, this afternoon, I think. Um, and the revised work programme um, just includes another change um, in relation to the remaining topics on the work programme. Uh, this arose from uh, a submission made in, at the private session yesterday morning. Um, and the, the point was put to the members and the members decided um, that they wished to consider the topic of climate change earlier than had been intended. Um, so now the position is that climate change will be considered at the second last weekend with fixed term parliaments and the manner in which referenda are held being considered at the last meeting. So we're, we're bringing forward the um, climate change weekend. Now, I just want to go back to the topic of submissions. Um, just briefly uh, to, to refer to the submissions process. Um, 
as you know, we sought submissions on the Eighth Amendment uh, and uh, between the 14th of October last and the 16th of December. And as you know, and you've read in the newspapers and elsewhere, um, the Assembly received in excess of 13,500 submissions. Approximately 8,000 were received online and almost 5,500 by post. Um, I have to say the volume demonstrates the high level of public engagement with the issue. Um, and I've mentioned this earlier, the publication of submissions has already begun and over a thousand um, have already been published. The publication process, when I say published, I mean um, published on, on our website. The publication process involves reading, reviewing, and in some cases, redacting submissions, and as such, it is very time consuming. Um, we're working as quickly as possible, and it is envisaged that it would be four to six weeks before all submissions are online. But the objective is to get that particular job finished as soon as possible. Um, and um, we had some discussion at the private session yesterday morning in relation to how we could make the best use of submissions. Um, and it was agreed, and I think this is a very good uh, idea, that we would have dedicated sessions on the submissions during the third and fourth weekends of the assembly. So that you're talking about March and uh, April, or are we talking about February and March? February and March, I think. February and March, I'm getting confused. Um, in addition, um, Given that we have uh, made particular reference to representative groups in um, the Assembly's agreed rules and procedures, and having regard to the members' feedback from the first weekend, um, the Secretariat will compile all of the submissions received from advocacy groups, political parties, and other organisations, and these will be given priority in terms of publication. In other words, it, it, we're going to abandon the chronological order to that extent. Um, because we, the, the initially we were um, putting the um, submissions up on the website chronologically as received, having regard to the date of receipt. But we're going to um, vary that slightly and we're going to give a priority to um, the um, submissions from advocacy groups. Um, and then also, uh, in the interest, in view of the interest shown by the citizens at the first weekend um, of hearing um, from women with experience um, of the issues uh, which will arise, um, all personal stories received from women will also be given priority in terms of publication. Again, we're. Uh, digressing from the uh, uh, strict chronology uh, position. Um, but uh, of course, all of the submissions, as has been indicated, will go up at, at some stage, hopefully as soon as possible. Uh, but we, we, we're, we're changing um, our previous position slightly in that regard. Um, I, I, I should say, but, after this weekend's um, very useful uh, engagement, um, I will continue to consider other best ways uh, to engage with the submissions. And um, I intend to consider further options in this regard based on the feedback from the me members and also on suggestions made by the expert advisory group. Um, in conclusion, um, uh, the, I just have to say that the uh, feedback session we've just uh, finished uh, does once again indicate um, how engaged our members are, and I'm really uh, grateful to the members for that. Um, it is absolutely clear to me that you are committed to doing uh, this job properly, and um, uh, uh, when we conclude this particular uh, aspect of our work, uh, you are committed, I'm clear, uh, to giving uh, the best recommendations that can be given to the houses of the Oireachtas. Um, so that's um, the end of today's business. Uh, 
this, the end of the weekend's business, it has been a very um, um, tiring, I have to say for myself, a tiring um, weekend in the sense that it involved a, a colossal amount of concentration um, over uh, two days. And um, I, I think everybody in this room um, is absolutely um, clear the extent to which the members of the Assembly are engaged, fully engaged uh, with, uh, with the project and uh, with the doing it properly. Um, we'll see you all again, hopefully, on the 4th and 5th of February. Meanwhile, thank you very much.